Once you're all signed up for Figma and log in, you'll be dropped into this sort of dashboard page. And when you're first getting here, this could be a little bit overwhelming. And the truth is, if you're going through Scrimba more often than not, you're going to be coming to Figma from a design file inside of a Scrim. This is an example of a slide from my React course. And in the Scrim, I mentioned that you can click on the screenshot here to go to the Figma design file. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are inside of this React Facts design file. And before we get into the nitty gritty of how to use Figma as a developer, I do want to take care of some housekeeping items. First of all, you'll notice here in the note, it mentions not to click the ask to edit button. Any requests that come in will just be ignored because if we grant edit access, then any changes they make will be changed for anybody. If you do feel like you want to make changes to the design file before you start coding it up, you still can do that. All you have to do is click the drop down arrow next to the name of the design file and say duplicate to your drafts. Once I do this, it will make a copy of it and put it in my drafts of my account. And once it's in your drafts, you can make any changes that you want to the file. OK, let's close this and go back to the original file. Now, one thing you might notice is that there are other people using this file currently and Figma's collaborative environment makes it so that I can see any comments or cursors or selections that other people have. In fact, I'm logged into another account here and you can see that any selections or highlights that I make or anything are showing up on my main screen here. And this can be a little bit distracting when I'm really just trying to focus on the design file itself. Fortunately, there's a really easy way to get rid of these cursors, and that's by going up here to the zoom, clicking the arrow next to it and turning off multiplayer cursors. Doing this will give me more of an unobstructed view of the file and make it a lot easier to stay focused on just the file itself. Sometimes you may also come here and see that there are a number of comments that have been left. You can also turn those off in this zoom window by just turning off the comments option. OK, that's enough of the housekeeping. Let's now move into a different design file and we'll see how we can actually use Figma. All right, here we are in the design file for one of the solo projects in my React course. And we'll go ahead and zoom into this upper left version of the design. And the first thing let's talk about is how to select the correct element in this design. For example, if I wanted to know what color these words front end developer is, I need to select it in Figma first before I can see any of the properties over here in this right panel. The easiest way to select the correct thing is on a Mac to hold your command key and I believe on a PC to hold control and then hover over the elements in the design. Anytime it has a either blue outline or a blue underline like this, clicking it will then select that correct element. If I don't hold command or control and I just select near it, then it's going to select the frame that contains all of the items there. You can double click to get into a more deeply nested frame and then double click again to get to the elements inside of that frame. You also can come over here to the frames panel on the left and just manually come look for the item that you want. But truly the easiest way is just to hold control or command and select on the item that you want. Once I've done that, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. The properties panel on the right will give me the information that I need to know. For example, right down here, I can see there's the colors and I get my hex value of F3B F99 telling me that that is the hex color for this particular text. If I click the color, it will simply copy that color hex to my clipboard. And if I were to come over to my design, you can see that just pasting it in has the hex value copied to my clipboard. Let's comment this out so we're not breaking our CSS. And we can see there's other information in the properties panel here as well. However, I do want to give you a word of caution that usually when it comes to this layout section, everything in Figma is assumed to be absolutely positioned, at least in the designs that I've dealt with. For example, it's saying that this text is absolutely positioned 414 pixels from the top and 186 pixels from the left. Hopefully by now you know that's not how you're going to lay this out. Sometimes the height and the width can be helpful, especially with elements like these buttons. But for the most part, I tend to ignore most of the information in the layout section. For typography, this typography section can be really helpful. Getting the font family, the font weight, the size and so forth is all really useful to me. And just like with the colors, if I want to, I can just click the name here and that will copy this text enter to my clipboard, which I can go paste over in my CSS. For a bit more of a shortcut, again, I can just click this copy button and this will actually copy all of those rules. And you can see that it gave me the CSS rules directly. 
Now you can see these are the same because I've already done this before. So let's go ahead and just assume this is the one that I just copied. And wow, there's actually something really interesting I just noticed. If we look in the design file, you can see that it's telling me my font size is 12.8 pixels and my line height is 15.49 pixels. Those are clearly too specific for me to use in my CSS. But when I copied this and brought it over here, it actually rounded them to the nearest full pixel value. So that's pretty interesting. That said, you should take any CSS that you pull directly from Figma with a big grain of salt. For example, the font size should likely be dealt with in rems instead of pixels. Things like having the letter spacing of 0m I don't believe is going to be super helpful to us. So it's always a good idea either to just manually copy the values and put them in your CSS by yourself, or you can come through and make sure that you delete any unnecessary rules before you really commit it to your code. While we're here talking about the properties panel, I think it's a good idea to talk about dev mode. At the time of recording, Figma has recently put dev mode behind a paywall, whereas before it used to be a free feature. Now it is something that you need to be a part of a paid team in order to use. Some people in the Scrimba community have been concerned that no longer having dev mode means that Figma won't be as usable anymore. But as you can see, we can get all the information we need directly here from the properties panel. And although dev mode did have some really nice features, it's not necessary at all to make good use of these design files. OK, so we've talked about how to select the correct element on the page that we're interested in getting more information about. We've talked about the properties panel. The next most useful thing I have found as a developer using Figma is knowing how far apart any elements on the page need to be from one another. I've selected this email button here, and we can actually see right here in the properties panel, there is information like this padding for the inside padding. Again, we should probably take this with a grain of salt because it's saying that the padding on the right is 13 pixels and the padding on the left is 11 pixels. Chances are we'd probably just split the difference and have that be 12 pixels on either side. But I may also want to know how far apart this email button should be from this LinkedIn button. In order to see that in Figma, all I need to do is hold down the Option key on a Mac, or I believe the Alt key on a PC, after having selected one of the elements, and then hover over to another element with my mouse. We can see here, as long as I'm holding down Option, I can see that these two buttons are 17 pixels apart from each other. And I can do this with any two items I want. For example, if I hold down Command on my Mac or Control on a PC and click on this envelope icon, I can then hold Option or Alt on a PC and drag my mouse to different elements to know exactly how far apart those should be. Again, my goal as a developer is not to be absolutely pixel perfect with this design. For example, these are 3.2 pixels away from each other. I'm probably just going to round that down to 3. But this is a super quick and easy way for us to get a better idea of how far apart items should be from each other, how much of a padding there should be inside of the button, although 12.2 pixels and 28.1 pixels might not be quite as helpful to me as when I clicked on the button and actually saw my padding values directly here in the properties panel. OK, and now the last thing that we're going to talk about is how to export assets from Figma. For example, this LinkedIn icon is not something I'm going to want to recreate in code manually, but rather I want to download this LinkedIn icon as an asset that I can then bring in maybe as a PNG to my website. Once I've made sure that I've selected the correct thing, I'm going to come over to this right panel. And instead of looking at the properties, I'm going to go to the export panel here. We can see it shows the item that I currently have selected, and if I click the plus icon to create a new export, I'm presented with a few options. The first thing that I like to do is to drop down this preview arrow to make sure that I've selected the correct thing. If you haven't used a design program, you might not be familiar with this, but this checkerboard pattern that you see is an indication that when this gets exported, that will be transparent. Whatever background you have behind it will show through the designs that are in the checkerboard. It might be a little bit hard to see in this example, so let me come down here to the GitHub icon. I'll hold Command and click on this as well. We'll click the plus icon, and awesome. OK, this is much easier to see. In the selection that I have, we can see that it's 25 by 25 pixels. And when I'm exporting it, I could decide that 1 times the resolution, which is 25 by 25 pixels, might be perfect for what I need. However, this is a vector graphic, so I can scale this up if I want. I could change this to 2x or 3x or a full 512 pixels wide if I really wanted to. As the developer of this project, you'll have to make a decision as to how large the asset should be. 25 by 25 may be a little bit too small, but 512 pixels wide is going to be far too large. It will increase the file size of just this little icon and slow everything down in the process. 
I tend to find that little assets like this are usually completely fine if I double their size, and this will download it as 50 pixels by 50 pixels, and will probably be fine. But of course, the judgment call is yours and highly depends on what you're actually exporting. I also have the option to change the file format if I really want to. I almost always end up sticking with PNG, unless for some reason I need to make code changes to, say, the fill color, then I might export it as SVG, but that's pretty rare. I usually just stick with PNG. Then all you do is click export. It will open up a window where you can choose where to save it, put it in your project files, and reference it directly from your code. And that's pretty much it. Figma, of course, is a super capable program, it has a ton more features than what we've covered here. But as the developer using Figma, I think I've covered about 95% of what I actually do in Figma. Of course, as with anything new, the best thing you can do is just play around with it. And the more time you spend in it, the more familiar with it you'll become. If you're already a Scrimba Pro member, then you're in luck. You'll get tons of time to practice here in Figma because every one of our solo projects has an associated Figma design file that you'll use as you're building out each of your solo projects. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. My name is Bob Zerol. Cheers and happy coding. Scream.